The Block is making a tree change and the official Block podcast is where we drill into the details. New episodes every Monday, thanks to Simmons, the great Australian builder. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Nine podcasts. It's lush. It's luxury. It is a dog's breakfast. You guys are full of surprises. Hello and welcome to the official Block podcast. I'm Shelley Craft. After tackling the bathroom in week one, a guest bedroom in week two sounds easy, doesn't it? Easy? On the block? <laughs> yeah, right. The real problem isn't the wardrobe, it's the window. It's in the wrong place. Guest bedrooms are the perfect chance for blockheads to show the style they plan to carry on throughout their builds, which isn't easy if you're still not quite across the brief. Everyone keeps telling us, be country, be country, be country. Look out your window, we're in the country. The contestants who are hip to the contemporary country vibe are having an easier time with the judges. It feels established. It's got that sense of comfort. In a moment, block judge Neil Whitaker joins me on the podcast and I'll ask him the question on everybody's lips, what is contemporary country? The whole idea of country living has been turned on its head. And what about this? For the first time this season, our little green friend flipped the script. That bloody gnome. The gnome secured a win for Uncor and Sharon by stealing victory from Dylan and Jenny by a mere half point. I'll ask them all about it when Uncor and Sharon join me later in the show. Another week in paradise, yeah. Make sure you tap the follow or subscribe button and never miss a moment of the official Block podcast, thanks to Simmons Homes. Simmons, the great Australian builder. Veteran block judge, design guru and a bona fide tree changer himself, Neil Whitaker. it is so lovely to have you here at the official Block podcast. Oh, thank you, Shelley. I, look, I don't know how I feel about being described as a veteran, <laughs> but I, I'll take it. I'll take it on the chin. Thank you. Um, thank and you. Uh, yeah, it's lovely to be here on the on the official block podcast with you. Well, it's not so official once we get into it, but yes, we are, we are doing it anyway. Um, I have been following your renovation as closely as I've been watching the block this season. How is your tree change going, my friend? Well, if, if you wait long enough, you'll probably hear my trade is in, in, the, in the back paddock cutting bricks at this very moment. Um, look, it's going really well now. Uh, we, we got off to a very slow start because of, you know, the weather problems in New South Wales that we're all too familiar with. Um, we lost a lot of time at the beginning of the year. But um, no, it's, it's, all, it's all going really well now. And uh, the end is in sight. The finishing line is in sight. I reckon we'll be done by, by September. What, so no 12-week time frame for you? <laughs> oh, my God. I think, do you know what, Shelley? I think doing this little project of mine, um, and let's face it, I'm, I'm just doing sort of guest accommodation. It has one bedroom. <laughs> um, has really, really uh, put into perspective, um, or it's, it's, it's been a really healthy reminder for me of what the contestants go through, seriously. I mean, yeah, 12 weeks. I mean, I've, I've been at mine since the beginning of the year um, and here we are in August. So, uh, yes, it's really made me appreciate what the contestants have to do. I think it is fabulous that we all do remind ourselves of that every so often. As I said, yes, calling you a veteran, you've been around the block a hundred times <laughs> now, as, as have we all. Yes. Um, but in that time, everyone has done their own little projects and I think it does make you that much more sympathetic when you come back to the block and see what these guys do produce in a week it is quite extraordinary what they can do oh look absolutely I mean absolutely you know there's nothing like going through the process yourself um, to, to give you a, a very sort of sharp reminder of what these guys are going through and I think you know, this this season shell in particular um, you know, given the problems with the weather and the location and the mud 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 I mean I, th I think every week um, Shana, Darren and I were, were so impressed and in awe of what the contestants had managed to turn around in just seven days. Mm. I do say that to mates that go, do the judges really love the rooms that much? And it almost needs that disclaimer at the end of every statement that the three of you make, doesn't it? Wow, this is amazing. And then you yep. need a for something that's been done in six days on the block. Yes. Oh, my God, I love this feature for something that they found that had to be on the floor and purchased yeah. at that time and delivered within two days on the block. That is Absolutely. not a normal renovation. 
No, it is not a normal renovation. Absolutely it's not. And it is, you know, ho however we feel about the individual rooms, and of course, you know, there are some rooms we love more than others. That's always going to be the case. Um, but all of them, you know, when you put it into context, when you put it into perspective, that these rooms have been achieved in seven days, and sometimes not even seven, because they take time off, don't they, to do the challenges. So it's really not even a full seven-day period. It is astonishing, astonishing, what they turn out. Absolutely it is. And this year, you know, beyond any other season that we've done, it is so immense. Uh, have you acclimatised to the scale of this year's season, both inside and outside the homes? Oh, look, it's, it's absolutely mind-blowingly immense. Um, it's funny because, you know, my property down here in, in New South Wales um, is two and a half acres. And now I'm fully aware of what two and a half acres means and the amount of work that that requires to maintain it. So, you know, when I once upon a time, I, I wouldn't have really understood what 10 acres meant, um, but I certainly do now. That's four times the size of my property. I know how big that is mm -hmm. and how much work that entails. So, I mean, when I heard that each of the contestants, each couple had 10 acres to contend with, uh, yeah, I knew what they had ahead of them. Oh, it is extraordinary. And the fact that landscaping is 12 weeks long. They had from the day they arrived till the day they leave to actually accomplish something with that 10 acres. And I know myself, yep. I would have whacked in, um, a, you know, a, a shed down in the corner for a stable. I would have chucked a couple of alpacas on there and some fencing and, <laughs> and been done with it. But these guys have such big nah. plans for what's going on. Oh, look, they, they, yes, they're all planning to take it to the absolute next level. And, you know, we're hearing these stories about oh, tennis courts and mm. olive groves and all these things that they intend to do. It's fantastic. It's absolutely amazing. It really is. Um, but yeah, I mean, every every week when you know, we turn up at the block, you know, I look at the size of those of those plots and think, how are they going to do this? How are they going to do this? Seriously? Well, in a very contemporary country style, Neil, that's how they're going to do it. Absolutely. What on earth does that mean from, <laughs> from a design guru like yourself? How do you classify country contemporary or contemporary country? Does it matter which word comes first? No, no, not at all it doesn't. Um, it's, it's actually a really relevant and, and appropriate thing, I think, to be discussing now because... The whole nature of, of, of country has, has changed so much. I mean, since the pandemic, you know, we, we know that there have been so many people moving out of the cities and moving into the country, which is basically, you know, why the block is, is in Mount Macedon this year. Um, you know, it, if, if, if that hadn't happened, if there had been no pandemic and no migration of people out to, to the country, I would have probably said that, you know, country contemporary is just a nice mix of classic country styling with some modern styling. But now the whole nature of country living has changed because so many people are moving out to the country but continuing the same lives that they lived in the city. So continuing to work from the country. <laughs> um, so that, that idea of your sort of country home just being your weekend retreat where you could maybe go, go a little bit country, um, a little bit kitsch, you know. Now, this, th these are main homes for people. So I think the whole idea of country living has been turned on its head. So it's no longer just what is acceptable or appropriate aesthetically. It's what's appropriate functionally as well you know the, the people have to think about how they're going to live how they can make these homes their permanent homes and yes make them fit in within the landscape but also make them function as contemporary family homes and of course all our contestants are i guess debriefing that brief in in very different ways uh, mm. we saw rachel and ryan particularly they have a very contemporary twist on their country styling, but then they're very clear who their buyer is as well. Mm. They're determined that it's going to be somebody who still, you know, has very much um, ties to the city, whether they're mm. coming up a few days a week, whether they're there on weekends with, with groups of their friends um, in their vineyard estate. You know, they have gone very contemporary in their country design. Are there any hard and fast rules to what you would like to see play out through the series? No, not really. Not really. And I know that sounds like I'm sitting on the fence. The 
albeit picket fence. Um, <laughs> but really, you know, the, the, the nature of, like I was just saying, the nature of everything has changed so much. I mean, once upon a time, if you were styling a country property, the chances are that you were doing it for people who were planning to retire to the country um, and looking for that sort of massive tree change. Um, so they, you know, people will, would be wanting the complete opposite of their city life, or um, they would be buying it as as a weekend retreat or a holiday retreat, something like that. So you know that that sort of idea of making the country home the complete opposite to the town home used to be absolutely paramount. But now, with people choosing to make their permanent home in the country, it is really changing everything because actually there's no reason why somebody shouldn't have the same uh, contemporary styling, the same level of functionality and luxury in their country home as they might expect to have in the city. So it's, it's made for a really, really interesting landscape. <gasps> We've had some great wows. Oh. And last night, of course, was our first guest bedrooms yep. that were revealed. Um, and there was a lot of wow factor in there. There was. I mean, they were five great rooms. They, they were. And what I particularly loved um, about some of those rooms was the way they felt established. Now, does, does that make sense? You know, I love it when you walk into a room, but particularly a bedroom, but when you walk into a room and it feels like it's been there a very long time and it just, you know, we, we talk about, sometimes we use language and I, and I think, you know, what, what are the viewers making of that? Like when, when we talk about rooms that wrap themselves around you. Um, but some rooms do that. Some rooms do that. And normally, you know, in normal life, they would be rooms that had perhaps been there a very long time and that had been created over a period of, of years. Um, but Dylan and Jenny, um, Uncle and Sharon in particular, managed to create rooms that really felt layered. You know, they were rooms that, that wrapped themselves around you and they had a beautiful feel and a beautiful ambience to them. <gasps> And I'm sorry, you can hear my, my lovely old dog, Otis, barking. Just, just to <laughs> prove that this is really authentic country living, I've got my dear old fella sitting by my side, and every now and again he barks. Sorry about that. <laughs> he does. He's saying, you're talking, Dad, but you're not talking to me. What is exactly, going on? You're not yes. looking at me. <laughs> well, this year, what, what stood out to you in uh, Jenny and Dylan's room, and as you said, Uncor and Sharon's, that did put them that cut above? And, of course, Uncor and Sharon then used the gnome to take out the win, which... <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dylan and Jenny, they're the bridesmaids again this week. You made an interesting comment about Uncor and Sharon's room particularly, noting it had this sort of patina of time. Um, outside the block, can good design be rushed or, or how does time sort of relate to a design feature? Oh, look, I mean, that, that's, that's a very interesting question because I, I personally believe that you know, the, the most layered rooms, the most interesting rooms, the rooms with the bit, you know, most personality have probably come together over a period of time. But, you know, that's not always practical. And it's certainly not practical on the block where they've, they've got very little time. So I think the way to achieve that <laughs> in a short space of time is to think about mixing up the layers. I mean, the rooms that are going to look... Um, in my opinion, the, the, the sort of the weakest are the ones where you just sort of buy into a trend and do everything matching. So everything feels the same. I mean, I think the trick is to mix up a few different styles if you can. I mean, it's, it's probably easier said than done, um, but layering, you know, choosing, I mean, I think we're going to see some antique pieces sort of creeping in into some of these homes, at least I hope we are, um, and using them with, with contemporary pieces. You know, thinking about the materials that you're using, thinking about, you know, mixing, mixing wool and linen and, and, and leather and, and ceramics and, and glassware and all, all those things just to create visual interest and, and a little bit of contrast in each room, I think that's how you can achieve that patina that, that we're talking about. And if you'd like a masterclass on that, all you need to do is look up Neil's uh, Instagram page and look at his magnificent styling in his home. And I know you haven't been there all that long, Neil, but it, it really does wrap around. I can feel it through the photos. I can even sort of smell the sense of, of being in your home. There is just that layering and experience, obviously. And you've obviously listened to the judges when they give you comments. <laughs> I, I have. I listen to the judges. I listen to the judges. 
judges every single week. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, we've been here four years. We've been here four years. And um, our home, look, our home is, is quite an eccentric mix of styles, I guess, but that's the way we like it. Um, but certainly, certainly, you know, once upon a time, my home would probably be a perfect example of what I call, you know, classic um, contemporary country. Um, but, you know, we moved in here pre-pandemic. We moved in here pre-pandemic and, um, you know, life and the world has changed so much since then. So what we have here, yeah, we love it, but we also know that it wouldn't suit everybody. I know the contestants love watching the show on the lounge room couch with their family and friends because there's so much that happens that they don't even see. There's so many comments that are made from other couples about their rooms. Uh, they get to see what's going on in the other homes. When you watch on a Sunday night and see how you're judging and your comments are taken by the contestants, do you always find that a bit a bit of a shock or do you have a bit of a giggle about it or, or both? How do you feel about what the contestants say when it comes <laughs> to the judges' comments? Oh, look, all the, all the above, really, all the above. Um, it's, it's always interesting when the show goes to air because the judges, you know, we are kept very much at arm's length from the contestants um, and that is something that I think a lot of the viewers don't always realise that we, I mean, I, I didn't meet any of the contestants, for example, this year. Um, you know, we are working in a vacuum. So, we, we, you know, of course we know who the contestants are. We know where they come from. We know what their skills are. We know how old they are, all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's not the same as actually meeting them. So I think what we, what we do, and I certainly do this over the weeks, is I build up a mental picture of what these people are like based on what they're delivering. Oh, goodness me. Then, <laughs> I would love to see No, no, I do. I, Shelley, I do. I've always, I've always done that. And then the fascinating thing for me when I watch the show, when it goes to air, <gasps> is to see how accurate I've been in my assumptions. And some, sometimes I'm spot on. Sometimes the couples are exactly as I always imagined them to be. Sometimes they're really not. And, and I, I also think that, you know, I, I can anticipate how they're going to respond to our comments. And sometimes, again, I get it right. And sometimes I sit on the sofa and I think, oh, dear. OK, that didn't go down well. Um, <laughs> Please, you've got to talk. Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's, there's always, I mean, when I sit on that, so even though I've been watching this show for the last 12 years, every Sunday night when I sit on that sofa, there is a bit of a, you know, a bit of an air of anticipation. I never quite know what's lying ahead for me or for my fellow judges. One of the biggest, I guess, dramas that we had this week was when a team disagrees amongst themselves. And this happened with Tom and Sarah Jane with that window that was misplaced. Um, I don't think either of them have won this battle even to this day. So can you settle this argument for us? Was the window in the right place or was the, the, the wardrobe in the wrong place? Who was right when it comes to this form over function debate? The window was definitely in the wrong place from my, my point of view. The window should not have been where it was. But I don't, I don't know what came first in that scenario. I mean, I'm assuming it was the window that was there before the wardrobe. I'm assuming it was too, and I know that Tom's argument was, but from the outside, the facade of the house had to be symmetrical. Uh, mm. What actually happened in the bedroom was that the window was in symmetry mm. to the exterior, just not in the bedroom. So the wardrobe should have just moved. Is that, is that what the point is? Well, it's, it's one of those situations where nobody's necessarily wrong or right, but somebody, i.e. Tom and Sarah Jane, should have looked at the whole situation and said, OK, we've got a problem. How are we going to sort it out? Because, you know, obviously the, the, what they ended up with, with a wardrobe that they couldn't open because it hit the window, that's not ideal. So there has to be some give and take. So if, if you know, may, maybe, it, I don't think it would have been possible to have moved the wardrobe. I think the wardrobe kind of had to be where it was. So maybe somebody had to bite the bullet and shift the window. So, you know, it, it's always, it's always a, a bit of give and take, don't you think? Uh, not with Sarah Jane and Tom, no. I don't, I don't <laughs> think there's any give and take there oh, at all. <laughs> should I be nervous? Yes, probably. Well, look, it is, it is a reality show. It is a drama. It is a romance. It is a tragedy. <laughs> there's, there's so much to come. <laughs> but but Shelley, I, I don't think, like you, I don't think I can ever remember any of the couples standing there on, on Sunday night in, in, in Scotty's workshop and arguing with each other. 
no, this is this is a first. And it is a first, isn't it? To come. It, it, it is a first. I think it's a first. I can't ever remember it happening before. They're very funny, and I can't wait to see now what they what they do from week to week. Me either, Neil. And we've got a great week coming up. So let's see what unfolds on the block this coming week. Thank you so much for being with us today. I know we'll catch you. up on this podcast again soon. I hope so. I hope so. Yes, have me back. Thank you. <laughs> see you, Shell. The official Block podcast is sponsored by Simmons, the great Australian builder. Every day at Simmons, our people stand by our promise to be with you throughout your new home journey. Over the last 70 years, Simmons have seen and dealt with it all. And despite today's trade and material shortages, our size and strong relationships means we'll deliver on what we promise. So if you're ready to join the thousands of Australians we're welcoming home each month, talk to Simmons, the great Australian builder. Find out more at simmons.com.au. CDB-U 49491. Last in the first week, first in the second week, we are joined now by House Three's Uncor and Sharon. You guys boarded the block roller coaster on day one, and I think we're yet to see some of the other contestants get on board <laughs> just yet. But you have been riding this thing for for two weeks now. Obviously, taking out the win in week two, people would say, typically speaking, there is a direct link between confidence and winning but with you guys <laughs> yeah. I'm not so sure that's the case you know you've got the 10 grand you've got the mature tree did that lead to more self-assurance for either of you taking out this great win yeah look with that um win we really needed it for our hearts and souls to be honest like after, especially after week one but we never came in with arrogance or like overconfidence ever you can see in the when I, we first start I'm asking a million questions like because I'm just I'm trying really hard to soak up the expertise around us we came to learn so that's what we were trying to do when we win week two that definitely is a little bit of a confidence booster and I think we have a good run like you know a bunch of great weeks after that as well because we're like okay cool now back your judgment trust it Mm -hmm. all these other things kind of affected the build and because we're emotional and sensitive human beings it was difficult to compartmentalize stuff it all became one big thing (laughs) but we kept trying yeah I'm like Shaz don't react to things and then she's like I won't I won't two seconds later yes I've (laughs) reacted to everything I'm like oh no and it's absolutely not an excuse at all but I literally got my eggs taken out like the week before we started so I was pumped up of hormones I froze my eggs before we came onto the show. Mm-hmm. It was already on the cards and we we're going to do it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. But you really don't take into consideration all of the other elements mm-hmm. when you kind of think of that. And so I actually think it's a beautiful thing, especially for unks in particular as a man on, you know, mainstream television to be so open mm-hmm. about how he feels and he's sensitive. He's so supportive of me and also talks about stuff like anxiety. And I'm really proud of him. We are so proud of of both of you for wearing your hearts on your sleeve. And the journey, as you say, that you went through before you came on the block, going through your egg freezing process, you know, so many couples and, and women around the country would know exactly where you're at. Perhaps we don't explain that very well during the show that, yeah, you, you're juiced up right now. So <laughs> yeah. everything is going to be just this elevated sense of emotion for you. And Unks, this, this newfound confidence from you, you are no longer just an accountant. And I hate the fact you even described yourself like that. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't get two words out of you in the first week and look no, at you go. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it took a bit of adjustment, obviously, but then I think our dynamic in general is Shaz, he's got a lot more to say. But yeah, with this, we actually had role reversal because what Shaz was sort of going through early and not that she was breaking down, she was continually doing stuff and achieving what we needed to do. But I think emotionally she needed so much support, which is usually not the case. So I think it gave me... a I suppose a role that I haven't been able to get the opportunity to do. So then I stepped into it and all my stress, all my anxiety sort of left the building, I think after two weeks or three weeks. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a great growth opportunity for myself. And I think I, yeah, I've learned those things He's along 100% the way. He's 100% maintained it, like coming out. It's just so beautiful to see. It was so beneficial for Unks. And I couldn't have done it with anybody else. And he's my best friend. And I don't know, like, I didn't think we could be closer. But even Unks said on the last, you know, interview that we had is like, I didn't think a thing of coming out of this would be that I'd be closer with my wife. Of You know, we've been together 15 years, but it's happened. Yeah. 
This is my favourite part <laughs> of the block because you do, you see this extraordinary change yeah. and to yeah. sit back on the couch and get to watch it will be extraordinary for you guys. And yeah. one of the things that we do get to see throughout the show also is how the other couples react when you're not around because there's lots of things that they'll say when you're there yep. and there's lots of mm. things that they say to their camera crews that you guys mm. don't hear. Yeah. And I think the positive feedback that they gave you about your bathroom I last know. week... That was, was so beautiful. Nice. You know, you were so crushed by what the judges had said and what yeah. Shane had obviously said particularly yeah. about you disrespecting the home when you'd given it everything you've got. Yeah. But all the other contestants loved what you created and the fact that you probably didn't really take that on board at the time yeah. but get to see that now, you yeah. think, oh, if only we'd heard those words <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, you know, while that, we were there. Do you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff you don't see. So after the day where it all happened, I obviously was crying and they were so supportive in the moment. I loved the contestants and there is a tinsy part of us where we're like, oh, hopefully, like we, we thought the experience was wonderful with all of them, that, that, that nothing happens behind the scenes that could affect our relationship. We do understand it's a competition, so there's a lot of that sort of stuff, but... In the moment, they were 100%. Every single one of them was there for me, even towards, you know, like the end, they were there. And so, but to hear it and to see it, I, I was blown away. I texted them straight away. I've got a WhatsApp group and I was like, thank you so much for being so sweet and supporting us. We're so grateful. But also to see their stuff that we didn't, because Unks and I are so open. We talked about everything, but I didn't know. I knew Rach was suffering a little bit, but I didn't know how badly she was suffering. And mm -hmm. that broke my heart as well because, these are all great people with different stories trying to do something cool. Mm. We'll be in this experience forever and forever bonded by it. The Block family, nobody believes us, but it's true. It's 100% <laughs> so <we're, laughs> true. <laughs> so we're two weeks in now as far as what the audience is seeing. You've come from dead last in the bathrooms <laughs> to now taking out a win for what was a beautiful guest bedroom. If you can put yourself back in that moment, do you feel like, okay, I now know what on earth this country contemporary thing is or still not really any idea. No, I think because the judges' feedback was so harsh the first up, I think it, it was good that it happened in week one because it was like, okay, this is completely not what you should be doing with this house. Now go in this other direction. And because we got great feedback on the guest bedroom, we're like, okay, we can sort of maintain this colour palette. I think the biggest thing for Shazzy was like that drama. It's hard if you're pairing everything back to still give the house that drama. But yeah, we obviously find different ways with the fireplace, repurposing that, having the panelling in the room, still getting the skylights, even though the ceiling rose is pretty close to the skylights. Yeah. We definitely got a clearer picture of what we needed to do going forward. Like I adore that house. If I could buy that house, I love it. The, you know, the house on the hill of the Grand, Grand Dame, they call it. But you know, but you guys come in on the Friday and we can't change anything. Like the tiles and everything, the fixtures are picked by midday on the Monday. I did try to change the tile colour to a lighter one, but I couldn't get it across the line because, you know, the timing and stuff. And there's, you know, no excuses or anything, but I intentionally would never dishonour that house. And I honestly wish we didn't have bathroom in week one because it is an expensive fix, like the judges said. If we had a bedroom and you know, I could change the walls and whatever. And But we basically tried to do the complete opposite for that room and went that's too much let's pair it back and go back to basics and didn't ask really anyone for advice and and did well but the house does command drama I will say the whole way through it needs to be unique because it is that house and we do take risks every single week um, mm. with everything we do sometimes they pay off sometimes they don't this week particularly it was the fireplace that is not a working fireplace but it's more just a feature Decorative. within the room that could mm -hmm. yeah not pay off it worked this week so yeah really grateful this year on the tree change, every single one of those houses I feel like is an extra character on the Absolutely. show. And, uh, and yours certainly is one drama queen that uh, <laughs> we're, going <to> see. <laughs> we're going to see in action over the next rollout yeah. of eight, eight or so weeks that we've got to go. Yeah. Um, all right, let's wrap this up with a little game. Are you ready for this? Yes, Yay! absolutely. Right. Let's go, fun. <laughs> an accountant and an actress. And now I would say, renovators, you have done the hard yards so far. You've got your apprenticeships. Let's play Tool Tax or TV. Yeah. <laughs> you ready yeah. for this? Interesting, I like it. <laughs> this is how it works. So I'm going to name five separate items and mm -hmm. I'll give you some time. You've got to tell me whether they're found in the toolbox, whether you'll see them in a TV guide, or whether this angst is a part of the Australian Taxation <laughs> Act. <laughs> oh, God. All right, good. <laughs> you ready for this? All right, item number one, the thumb detector. 
Ooh. Is this a tool, a TV show, or something that you'll find in the tax act? That's a good one. Thumb I don't think it's, it's not tax, the tax so thing, no. I'd have to say TV show, to be me honest. Me too. I'm going to go with the TV show. Oh, 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 tool. Oh, it's a tool. It is a, um, a humorous name for a hammer. Oh, oh, of course. Next time you're on the site, Unks, you'll go, get me, get me the thumb detector, please. Hey, there that's you it. go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, like number it. two. Balance your budget. Yeah, that's obviously... Well, I'd say tax. Accounting term. Yeah. <laughs> or balance your budget being on the TV show also, on the TV show. Yes, it was yeah. a TV show back in 1959 on Channel 9, believe it hey, or not. there you go. Jeez Louise. <laughs> yeah, was... Not still around. Yeah. <laughs> you'd you'd be the first to let us know, is tax as boring as we all think it is, Unks? Or is it actually really exciting? <laughs> Could you make a TV show out of tax now? <laughs> no, no chance. Or oh, tax evasion, maybe, but no, yeah, not tax. <laughs> Here we go, number three. Sales suppression tools. I'd say that'd be tax. If you go tax, I'm going TV. No, it'd have to be. Oh, you've got to be together on this one. Oh, What's do we? I'd say tax. Okay, I'll go with you. Tax. tax. You are so right, yes. Section 8, WAD of the Taxation <laughs> Act, as oh, a matter wow, of fact. Oh, wow, Shell's riveting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you didn't know I knew anything about tax, did you? <laughs> yeah, oh, so well. many surprises up my sleeve. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hacksaw Ridge. That's a TV That's movie. That's a movie, yeah. <gasps> Can you tell me who was in it? Yeah, or who was directed by? Yes, directed you're so it. right. 2016, yeah. that uh, World War II, and we had our Adelaide actress Teresa Palmer in that too. <gasps> there you mm. go. Isn't she doing well? She's fantastic, and she is from Adelaide, so always proud of her. All right, the last one, Dozuki. Dozuki. I reckon that's got to be a tool. What do you reckon? Bubba? Yeah, it's a tool. In fact, it is. It's a Japanese handsaw. Well done. Well played. Oh, there you Yay. go. Thanks. Only one wrong. Very good. <laughs> and well played all the way through. I know I'm going to be catching up with you down the track, but really appreciate you coming on board today to talk us through your winning guest bedroom, thanks to the Gnome. You're glad you played that, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> thanks for so much. And these podcasts are amazing. Good job, Shell. Thanks, Shells. Don't miss the block on nine this week as the blockheads race to complete another bathroom. This one, the master ensuite. And never miss an episode by following the official block podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. The Block Podcast. Thanks to Simmons Homes. Catch you next week. The official block podcast is sponsored by Simmons, the great Australian builder. Every day at Simmons, our people stand by our promise to be with you throughout your new home journey. Over the last 70 years, Simmons have seen and dealt with it all. And despite today's trade and material shortages, our size and strong relationships means we'll deliver on what we promise. So if you're ready to join the thousands of Australians we're welcoming home each month, talk to Simmons, the great Australian builder. Find out more at simmons.com.au. CDB-U49491.